Hello everyone, I am Dr. Veena Raparthi and in today's class we are going to learn about one of the important concepts of climatology which is about the atmosphere. We are going to learn in detail about the structure and composition of atmosphere. Now I would request you all to observe the image. In the image you can see that the layers of air are enveloping the surface of the earth. If you see the stratified layer, the first layer very near to the earth surface is the layer of troposphere. Over the layer of troposphere you have stratosphere and then the mesosphere. Above the mesosphere you have the layer of thermosphere and then above the thermosphere you have exosphere connecting to the outer space. Now all these layers envelop the earth's surface. Apart from these layers you also have some other activities we are, which are going on right from experiencing rainfall to flying off jet planes to experiencing meteor showers and then launch, launching off satellites. Now before going into the details of all these layers we would know what atmosphere is. Now atmosphere is one of the main components of the earth's interdependent physical systems. When I am saying it is one of the main components here we need to understand about the other realms which are also equally important. The first one is hydrosphere or the water component for us. Now apart from the water component you also have the mineral skin which is the lithosphere. Lithosphere along with atmosphere and hydrosphere comprise the abiotic component which enables life to continue on the earth. Right? The word atmosphere was coined from two Greek words. Atmos refers to the gaseous state or the vapor state and sapphira which is globe or a ball. So atmosphere is nothing but the layers of air that surround the earth. Okay? Now atmosphere also comprises of several gases such as oxygen, nitrogen, carbon dioxide. Now this atmosphere is not only present over the surface of the earth but it also envelops other celestial bodies. But why is that life is present only on the surface of the earth and why not on the other planets? The reason behind is oxygen the amount of oxygen that is present on the earth's atmosphere is comparatively more than any other planets. That is the reason why earth is a habitable planet and is unique planet. The air is an integral part of the earth's mass and 99% of the total mass of the atmosphere is confined to a height of 32 kilometers. Now if you check the earth has a gravitational pull and because of this gravitational pull all these molecules of air are attracted to the center of the earth and that makes confinement of 99% of the air towards the surface very near to 32 kilometers. Now we are going to learn about the vertical structure of atmosphere. Now when we are talking about the vertical structure of atmosphere we need to understand the criteria on which we are dividing these atmospheric stratification. Okay? The criteria on which we are dividing is temperature. Now based upon the temperature we are dividing the layers of atmosphere into troposphere, stratosphere, mesosphere, thermosphere and exosphere. Now I would request you all to observe the image. Now if you observe the image you can see that the temperatures are increasing to my right hand side and they are decreasing towards my left hand side. Now this is the layer of troposphere which is very near to the earth surface. Now the thickness of this troposphere varies from 8 kilometers to 20 kilometers. Now why does this vary we are going to talk about later but here when we are talking about temperature as a criteria we will discuss as to how this temperature varies. Now if you see the image you can see that the temperature decreases in the layer of troposphere right. Now as you go higher in altitude temperature decreases right till what 
transition layer does it decrease? It decreases till the layer of tropopause which is around 20 kilometers in altitude. Now, here in the tropopause which is a transitional zone in between troposphere and stratosphere, there is a constancy of temperature that is maintained. Now, this layer where constant temperature is maintained is called as a tropopause. Now, what happens in the layer of stratosphere? Now, on what basis are we demarcating troposphere from stratosphere is the layer of stratosphere sees the increasing temperatures. The temperature increased towards the positive side and in the layer of stratosphere till stratopause there is a constancy that is maintained in stratopause right which is a transitional zone in between stratosphere and mesosphere. Now, what happens to the temperature in mesosphere? In mesosphere, the temperatures decrease drastically till 80 kilometers, the temperatures fall down to minus 100 degrees Celsius, right. At mesopause, you can experience minus 100 degrees Celsius and in the next layer which is thermosphere, the temperatures increase drastically till 400 kilometers. Now, this is the vertical structure of atmosphere which helps us to understand on what basis are we demarcating the stratified layer of atmosphere. Now, next we are going to learn about the characteristic features of each and every layer of atmosphere which gives us a clear information about the structure of the atmosphere. The first layer from the surface of the earth is the layer of troposphere. Now, this is the lowest layer of the earth surface and the troposphere starts at the surface of the earth and goes up to a height of 70 to 20 kilometers. The air never remains static in this layer, meaning there is always movement of air, whether it is vertically in the form of air current or horizontally in the form of wind. Therefore, this layer is called as a changing sphere or troposphere. Now, what is the important thing that happens in this layer? All weather conditions are experienced in this layer. Now, we have learnt earlier that the temperature varies according to the altitude in troposphere. Now, when there is variation in temperature, there would be variation in the rate of evaporation. When the rate of evaporation changes, there would be change in humidity. When humidity changes, the rate of precipitation and the type of precipitation is also altered. So, cloud cover is also one of the important thing that can be noticed. So, troposphere experiences all weather phenomena which is one of the important characteristics of troposphere. Now, the temperature decreases in this layer which we have already discussed. Now, at what rate does it decrease? It decreases at rate of 1 degree Celsius for every 165 meters in altitude or height. Now, this phenomena is called as normal lapse rate. Now, this is one of the important questions which we need to make a note. Now, tropos tropopause separates troposphere from stratosphere. Now, going ahead to the next layer. Now, before that we are going to discuss why the thickness of troposphere changes. Now, before we have discussed that the layer of troposphere has varying thickness. Now, why does the thickness vary? The thickness of troposphere is maximum at the equator, deeper at the tropics up to 20 kilometers and shallower near the polar regions. In summer, it is, is indistinct in winter. In India, the thickness of troposphere is somewhere around 16 kilometers. Now, why does the thickness vary? The thickness varies because of high rate of insulation very near to the equator. We all know that equator receives direct rays of sun. Now, direct rays of sun implies to high temperatures. Now, high temperatures lead to heating of molecules of air which leads to higher intermolecular spaces. Now, air gets heated drastically, it becomes lighter and lighter air tries to rise up increasing the thickness of troposphere at equator. Now, opposite happens on the 
poles. Now, what happens over the poles? The poles experience very slanting rays of sun. Very slanting rays of sun implies to very low rate of insulation. Now, this low rate of insulation leads to creating denser molecules of air which gets attracted to the gravitational pull of the poles decreasing the thickness of troposphere over polar regions. Now, this is one of the reasons. The other reasons which contribute to the variation of thickness implies to the centrifugal force which acts over the equator which deflects the winds. So, all these phenomena are the reasons for changing or varying in thickness of troposphere. Now, the next layer is the layer of stratosphere which is the second layer of atmosphere found above the troposphere. Now, the height of stratosphere is 50 kilometers right and this layer has very dry air where the water vapor content is very very less and one of the most important characteristic feature of stratosphere is it provides advantage for flight because it is above stormy weather conditions and has steady strong horizontal winds. So, this layer is very very amicable for flying of your aircrafts. Now, another important characteristic feature of stratosphere is presence of ozone layer. We all know that ozone layer protects us from the harmful ultraviolet radiations which come from the sun. So, ozone layer is also present at an altitude of 10 kilometers to 30 kilometers and this layer protects us from harmful rays. Now, stratopause separates stratosphere from troposphere. Now, going ahead to the layer of mesosphere. Now, mesosphere is found above the layer of stratosphere. One of the most important questions that is asked in the exams is about the temperature or which is the coldest zone of all the atmospheric layers and your answer here should be mesosphere. Now, mesosphere is the coldest of all the layers of atmosphere. It starts at 50 kilometers and goes up to altitude of 85 kilometers. By 80 kilometers, it reaches to the temperature of minus 100 degree Celsius. Now, most important characteristic feature of mesosphere is burning of meteors. All the extraterrestrial objects which tries to enter the earth's atmosphere gets burnt up in this layer. Now, the upper limit of mesosphere is mesopause which separates mesosphere from thermosphere. Now, going ahead the next layer is the layer of thermosphere which is above the mes uh, mesopause from 80 kilometers to 400 kilometers. Now, the most important characteristic feature is radio waves which are transmitted from the earth are reflected back in this layer and the reasons for this is the lower part of the thermosphere has again a layer called as ionosphere which has ions. Okay, the free radicals which are responsible for reflecting the radio waves and those help in communication. Now, what about the temperature in this layer? In this layer, the temperature increases drastically and one of the most important phenomena is aurora borealis in the northern hemisphere. Now, what is this aurora? The solar winds when they get obstructed okay, by the gases of oxygen and nitrogen in the earth's atmosphere, they produce streaks of lights and this is a very colorful phenomena which is called as aurora borealis in northern hemisphere and aurora australis in the southern hemisphere. Now, this layer is also very very important layer because satellites which help us in communication are placed in this layer of thermosphere. Now, we have discussed about ionosphere also as said earlier it is a lower layer of thermosphere. Now, the last layer in the stratification of atmosphere is a layer of exosphere. It is the outermost layer of atmosphere the zone where molecules and atoms escape into spaces and these 
are this exosphere is again converted to outer space. Now, it extends up to 10,000 kilometers. Now, this is the last layer. So, coming back just a revision, we have learnt about the structure of atmosphere which have demarcated layers of troposphere, stratosphere, mesosphere, thermosphere, exosphere and the criteria on which we have delineated these regions is the temperature. Now, after we have learnt about the structure, we will be learning about the composition of atmosphere. Now, when I say composition of atmosphere, what is actually there in this air? What does air comprise of? Air comprises of gases, air also comprises of water vapour and dust particles. Now, when we talk about gases, we need to know that these gases are divided into two. One is the permanent gases which are constant and the variable gases. Now, first we will be learning about the permanent gases and under permanent gases we have nitrogen which comprises of 78 percent, oxygen which comprises of 21 percent and carbon dioxide here has 0, 0.03 percent and rest of the gases are neon, helium, methane, krypton and argon. Now, here is a catch. Uh, carbon dioxide is considered as a permanent gas, the proportion of which should be 0.03 percent. But what is happening in today's day to day life because of industrialization, because of increase in population and burning of fossil fuels, the amount of carbon dioxide which should be 0.03 percent in the natural dry air is increasing drastically. And what is the main role of this carbon dioxide? Now, the main role of carbon dioxide is it is a greenhouse gas. Carbon dioxide along with water vapour tries to capture some amount of heat that comes or that is reflected back in the form of terrestrial radiation. Now, this capturing of heat is very very important to maintain the temperature of the earth during night and during winters. If there was no carbon dioxide, then the earth would have become frozen. Now, this is because of the percentage of carbon dioxide which is 0 0.03, there is some amount of heat energy that is captured which is enabling life to continue. Now, we need only 0 0.03 percent, but what is happening because of burning of fossil fuels and combustion? The amount of carbon dioxide is increasing in the natural composition of air which is allowing more and more heat capture. Now, this is leading to rising temperatures and leading to a phenomena which is discussed of late in climate conferences as global warming and greenhouse effect. Now, what are the sources of this carbon dioxide? Carbon dioxide is necessary for plant and animal okay, life. Uh, plant and animal respiration is one of the source of carbon dioxide. You have the natural sources such as volcanoes, organic decay and combustion which is an anthropogenic factor. Now, what are the sinks? Sinks are photosynthesis. Photosynthesis is a process which is carried on by plants. Plants utilize carbon dioxide for the process of photosynthesis and oceans also act as one of the sink of carbon dioxide. Right. So, this is one of the greenhouse gases which is considered as a permanent gas and also a variable gas. Now, coming to another variable, I mean coming to the variable gases which are very, very smaller or very improportionate in the natural composition of air which can be your methane, which can be your water vapour. Right. These are your variable gases apart from the permanent gases. And the next important gas that we are going to discuss is about the ozone. Now, when we have discussed about the layer of stratosphere, I have talked about ozone. Now, this ozone is present at an altitude of 10 to 30 kilometers that is at higher troposphere and lower stratosphere. Right. Now, this ozone layer is both beneficial and also harmful. Why is it beneficial? 
it is beneficial due, due to the presence of ozone layer. Now, this ozone layer as we all know protects us from harmful radiation of sun and when it is very close, when ozone is very close to the earth surface, it acts as an irritant causing lung infections and allergies. So, ozone is both beneficial and harmful. Now, here we need to understand one of the phenomena as to how this ozone is formed. Now, when oxygen reacts with ultraviolet radiation, it splits oxygen molecule into O and O. Now, this O2 again combines with O to form ozone which is an O3 molecule. Now, this O3 is very very important because it stops okay, the ultraviolet radiation. right? So, this is how ozone is created. Now, this ozone layer is destructed because of refrigeration, okay, air conditioner and use of chlorofluorocarbons. Now, when we use chlorofluorocarbons, these chlorofluorocarbons which come out from refrigerators, from air conditioners, they try to react with ultraviolet radiations of sun and they break up the CFCs into chlorine ions and CFCs. Now, these chlorine ions they try to break up the ozone okay and this ozone which tries to break it forms obstruction in the form of ozone hole now this ozone holes allow the harmful radiations of the sun to reach the earth now this is how ozone is created and is destructed now the next important greenhouse gas is methane now this methane is very very important it is a uh, it is a potential uh, greenhouse gas and is seen mostly in wetlands and tropics now the sources are rice cultivation zones now we all know all the tropical regions are like very uh, important rice growing areas now wherever rice is cultivated more methane is released into the air now due to the release of methane what happens to the temperature more heat capture is taking place and more global warming is happening. Now, this is what is discussed in climate conferences as to when we say that west is the major, mean major proportion of global warming is happening in the western countries because of industrialization they blame the tropical regions or the developing countries are the major contributors of global warming because they are the growing areas of rice which contributes to methane pollution. Now, the important sources of methane are rice cultivable areas, mining and biomass burning and the major sinks are atmospheric chemical reactions. Now, one of the most important uh, contributor or a greenhouse gas or a variable gas is water vapor water vapor along with carbon dioxide also captures the amount of reflected terrestrial radiation and tries to maintain the earth's warmth so that it can enable life to continue. Now, the proportion of water vapor changes or alters as one moves from tropics towards the poles. Right? High insulation leads to high rate of evaporation and leads to more humidity in the air and that is the reason why water vapor gets altered. Now, the last part of the composition of air is trying to understand the role of dust particles or aerosols. Now, what are these dust particles? These dust particles are the solid particles like the salt, sooth, soil, pollen, all these solid particles which are floating in the air are called as dust particles or aerosols. Now, their uh, concentration is 17,000 inch cube and the diameter is less than 10 microns and their lifespan is days to weeks and they mostly are coming to the layers of the atmosphere by natural sources like volcanoes or acid rains and mostly these uh, particles are very very important because they form solid nuclei or substratum for condensation to take place. So, they also play a very very important role and the primary sinks include dry and wet depositional places. So, to sum up we have learnt about the structure 
as well as the composition of atmosphere wherein we have learnt about the importance of atmosphere. Now, atmosphere is very very important for continuation of water cycle, for the oxygen cycle and also nitrogen cycle. All this is the significance of atmosphere which along with hydrosphere and lithosphere comprises of abiotic component of the earth. Now, when I am saying abiotic component, when we learn about biosphere, we say that biosphere is an area or the realm where life continues or life exists. Now, we can live without water and without food for one or two days, but is it possible to live without breathing air for few minutes? It is not possible. Now, here lies the significance of atmosphere that we breathe air to live and that is what makes earth a habitable planet. Along with atmosphere, hydrosphere and lithosphere are also equally important and this atmosphere along with the mineral skin which is the lithosphere when rocks wither it forms soil and this soil is very very important for plant life. So, we as human beings and also animals try to depend upon soil for our livelihood. So, that is where the importance of lithosphere lies and we all know about hydrosphere which comprises of the water component. So, all these abiotic components of atmosphere, hydrosphere and lithosphere enable the biosphere or the life to continue on the earth. Thank you.